What if everything you know about reality, your memories, history, and even this very moment, was created just last Thursday? Welcome to Last Thursdayism, the ultimate reality-bending hypothesis. It suggests that the entire universe, along with everything in it, including your memories, the historical records you trust, and all physical evidence, was created just a few days ago. Imagine this. You wake up one morning with vivid memories of your childhood, relationships and life experiences. Your photo albums show you as a child. Your social media timeline documents years of posts and history books describe events that span millennia. But what if all of that was fabricated at the moment of creation? Let's break it down. The theory proposes that the universe could have been created in a fully formed state, complete with the illusion of a past. Fossils? Planted to give the appearance of an ancient Earth. Historical documents? Fabricated to create the illusion of time. Your memories? Implanted to make you believe you've lived through events that never actually happened. The genius and horror of last Thursdayism is that it's impossible to disprove. Any evidence you might present to counter it could just as easily have been created at the moment the universe came into being. After all, if a godlike creator can fabricate a universe, it can fabricate memories, evidence, and, and even your skepticism about the theory. But why would anyone entertain such a bizarre idea? Last Thursdayism isn't just a quirky thought experiment. It's a philosophical tool designed to challenge how we define evidence, memory, and reality itself. It's rooted in the broader debate about solipsism and the nature of knowledge. How do we know what we know, and can we trust the tools we use to understand the world? Now take this a step further. What if last Thursdayism applies not just to the physical world, but to your sense of self? What if you were created last Thursday, complete with fake memories and fabricated relationships? Would that change how you see yourself, your actions, and your purpose? And here's the kicker. Last Thursdayism doesn't just stop at last Thursday. The same logic can apply to any moment. The universe could reset every week, every day, or even every second, and you'd never know. Your entire life might be a series of fresh starts, with your memories seamlessly replaced at each reset. In the end, Last Thursdayism isn't really about proving the universe was created recently. It's about forcing us to confront the fragility of our assumptions. It asks us to consider that the foundations of our reality, our memories, our history, our very sense of existence, might not be as solid as they seem. So the next time you wake up, look around and ask yourself, what if this is all brand new? What if everything, your memories, your world, your reality, started just last Thursday? Would you even be able to tell? When your consciousness is uploaded to a machine, are you truly alive or just a ghost in the shell? Imagine this. Technology has advanced to the point where every aspect of your mind, your memories, thoughts, emotions, and personality can be transferred into a digital realm. This isn't science fiction, it's the promise of a digital afterlife, the ultimate escape from death. But here's the question. Is the version of you in the machine really you, or just a copy? The idea of uploading consciousness has been around for decades, gaining traction with advancements in neuroscience and artificial intelligence. Imagine using something like Neuralink to map every neuron in your brain, creating a digital replica that could live forever. This copy could continue your conversations, finish your creative projects, and preserve your identity for eternity. But what if it isn't you experiencing this immortality, but a version of you that thinks it's you? Let's take it further. Imagine your physical body dies, but your consciousness has already been uploaded. The digital version of you wakes up in a virtual paradise. It feels like you, thinks like you, and acts like you, but are you still there? Or has the original you ceased to exist? The philosophical concept of continuity of consciousness 
suggests that unless your mind seamlessly transitions to the new medium, the person waking up in that virtual world might be nothing more than a convincing copy. Then there's the question of ownership. Who controls this digital you? Could it be sold, hacked, or manipulated? Imagine being trapped in a virtual reality, forced to work, entertain, or even suffer for eternity because the owner of your data decides to monetize your existence. The promise of eternal life suddenly becomes a dystopian nightmare. And what about consent? Would a digital even have the ability to decide whether or not it wants to exist? If this consciousness has all your memories and personality traits, does it have the same rights as a human being? Could it die by choice? Or would it be condemned to an infinite loop of existence, unable to escape? The allure of a digital afterlife is undeniable. No more illness, no more aging, no more fear of death. But at what cost? Is the preservation of identity worth losing the essence of what makes us human, our flaws, our mortality, our connection to the physical world? As we stand on the brink of these technological advancements, we're forced to ask ourselves, are we ready to live forever, even if it means losing everything that makes life meaningful? Or is death not a limitation but a vital part of what it means to be alive? What if I told you that everything you thought you knew about identity, yourself, your belongings, even the concept of what something is, could be an illusion? Imagine an ancient ship, the pride of its nation. Over the years, its wooden planks begin to rot. One by one, the planks are replaced until every original piece is gone. Here's the question, is it still the same ship? What if you took the old, rotted planks and rebuilt another ship in a different location? Now there are two ships, both claiming to be the original. Which one is the true ship of Theseus? This thought experiment pushes us to question how we define identity. Is it based on the physical components, the continuity of existence, or something intangible like memory or purpose? Now consider this. Every cell in your body is replaced every seven to ten years. Are you still the same person you were a decade ago? What about your mind? Your memories might feel continuous, but are they enough to define you as you? Modern technology takes this even further. If you dismantle a robot and replace every part over time, is it still the same machine? What if you rebuild it with the discarded parts? This question isn't just theoretical, it's real. In an age of cloning, digital backups, and even brain-to-machine interfaces, we're inching closer to confronting the ship of Theseus in our own lives. But here's the deeper layer. What if identity isn't tied to physical continuity at all? What if it's just a story we tell ourselves? A comforting lie to avoid the terrifying truth that we are just fleeting arrangements of matter and energy, are you ready to confront what makes you, you? What if I told you that death might not be the end, not because of an afterlife, but because of the very fabric of the universe itself? Let's break this down. Quantum mechanics suggests that particles exist in a state of superposition, simultaneously occupying every possible state, until observed. Think Schrodinger's cat trapped in a box, both alive and dead, until the box is opened. Now imagine you are the cat. According to the many worlds interpretation of quantum physics, every time a decision is made or an event occurs, the universe splits. One version of you takes path A, another path B. When it comes to life and death scenarios, the same rule applies. In some branches of the multiverse, you survive, in others, you don't. But here's the twist, your consciousness can only persist in the universes where you survive. From your perspective, every time you face a deadly event, you'll wake up in the branch where you made it out alive. Over and over again, you'll dodge death, not because you're invincible, but because the you that perceives reality 
always lands in the timeline where you exist. This isn't immortality in the traditional sense. You'd still age, still grow frail, still succumb to the slow decay of time. But as long as there's a tiny chance of survival, your consciousness could theoretically keep going. The only problem? One day, the chances run out. Even in the multiverse, immortality has its limits. Quantum immortality raises chilling questions. Are we the sum of infinite near-death experiences? Is death just an illusion, a transition between realities? And if this theory is true, are you ready to live forever?